Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning as the race to vaccinate Americans continues, the economy is slowly starting to recover thanks to relaxed COVID-19 restrictions. Outside with live cam. Boy, we dodged a bullet last night. We didn't really get the storms here, but be glad. Some of the storms that were out there late last night uh, were producing baseball-sized hail way up north and west of San Antonio. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday. It is April 13th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Yeah, we dodged that, but we, we got the humidity. The humidity is still in place. Let's get an update on when our next frontal system will be in our general area. We're going to have uh, sort of a front moving through today. today. It's not going to be that noticeable. I mean, we will have temperatures about 10 degrees cooler than, mm -hmm. than yesterday. Still a lot of clouds, a lot of humidity around here. Uh, yeah, it's kind of a iffy sort of a forecast, but uh, one thing for sure, we are going to see temperatures throughout the rest of the week still make that slow decline. And then a couple of showers are going to be possible here and there. It is, yeah, it's muggy out. So, I mean, you kind of walk out and go, what difference, you know, from yesterday to this morning. There are a couple little sprinkly showers maybe showing up. This is some clutter around the radar site right now, and there may be just one or two little sprinkles here and there. Um, not anything really of any consequence. 71 degrees, so we're roughly 10 or so above normal upper mid upper 60s and portions of the hill country and yeah we still have these numbers dew points are well up into the mid 60s so yes you are going to be greeted when you open up the front door by the humidity oak is on the high side although it did come down substantially from the previous day's reading and throughout the rest of the morning pretty much steady temperatures a couple of sprinkles here and there there's a, a hint of fog here or there as well this morning it's not going to be a too big of a deal though and then 80 for a high temperature today mostly cloudy sky Guys, a couple of showers here and there, and it is going to be somewhat breezy northeasterly wind at 10 to 20 miles per hour. So again, we'll, like I said, slowly get cooler as the, the week goes on. And we keep some rain chances around here, not constantly, but at least there's that chance. More on that coming up in a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Samuel King, on this Tuesday morning. What's going on, sir? Well, Mike, you're already uh, pretty busy this morning. There is, there is a rollover. A uh, short time ago, this is at I-37 at I-35 where they come together. So let's take a closer look uh, at uh, this scene here. You can still see the emergency uh, of responders on the scene uh, this morning. So here's a look at uh, this area on the map here. Of course, this is 37 where it ends and turns into 281 and then there's 35. So that's uh, where that uh, crash was overnight and you're still seeing that closure on the ramp. We'll see how much longer that goes. Uh, looking across uh, the rest of the area, what we have is construction, including here on the west side of Loop 410 at military had been closed, but it looks like these uh, sort of the traffic flow here has improved a lot, but there has been some construction on 410 at 151 and up here at the Calabra Road intersection, but that should be improving shortly. It was scheduled to run until 5 o'clock. Also, one more piece of construction. This is going on all week. Some overnight uh, construction here, Loop 1604 and 281. Those flyover ramps are doing some work there. And we'll have another update coming up. Mark, Stephanie? Thank you, Samuel. Good to see you. Well, this morning, there's a growing debate over whether more shutdowns are possibly needed to address the COVID crisis in several states. Even though more than 20 percent of Americans are now fully vaccinated, infections are surging in some areas. ABC's Faith Abube has the latest. This morning, a blunt message from the CDC director to state leaders in Michigan, pleading with them to shut the state down amid skyrocketing COVID cases. Really what we need to do in those situations is shut things down. Michigan's governor is requesting more vaccines. She says doubling down on vaccine distribution to achieve 70% herd immunity is the answer. We've got to grit our teeth and keep moving forward. We're making great progress. We are getting close. But the White House says a so-called whack-a-mole approach with vaccine shipments won't work because it would take up to six weeks to send the state more doses. Instead, the CDC is sending Michigan a surge team to help FEMA with vaccinations. And the agency's director is calling for stronger restrictions in the state. Go back to our basics, to go back to where we were last spring, um, last summer, and to, to shut things down, to flatten the curve. Across the country, the daily case average is now at peak summer surge levels, about 66,000 cases per day. Experts say looser restrictions and more contagious variants of the virus are driving the spike. A new study says the UK variant, the now dominant strain in the US, is more transmissible, but likely does not cause more severe disease. Faith Abube, ABC News.
Here in Bear County, about 20% of residents are now fully vaccinated, but several more people will need to receive the vaccine before we can reach herd immunity. If you're one of those residents trying to figure out where you can get one this week, another clinic is opening up in the surrounding city in our viewing area. Sarah Costa is live downtown with more on how you can register. Good morning, Sarah Costa. How are you doing? Good. Good morning, Mark. Well, the city of Schertz is opening up a vaccine clinic this week at the Schertz Civic Center. Appointments will be required and walk-ups will not be accepted. Appointments starting tomorrow for the Moderna vaccine will be available. And on that's, of course, April 14th. And then also on Friday, April 16th, registration for the vaccine clinics will remain open until all appointments are filled. City officials say that anyone over the age of 18 can register for an appointment online at shirts.com slash COVID-19 slash COVID vaccine. The vaccine clinics will be held at the Shirts Civic Center, which is located at the 1400 Shirts Parkway Building 5. For assistance with registering for the notifications, call 210-619-1000. Now, residents, if you don't make it into this week's clinic, your, ret your urge to sign up for notifications. Well, they'll send out alerts letting you know when future clinics are available. You can do that at shirts.com slash alerts. Live from downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. Here's a look at where we stand with coronavirus cases here at home. More than 300 new cases have been reported, but nobody died from the virus. There continues to be a slight rise in COVID-19 patients in our local hospitals. 217 are being treated, 79 are in the intensive care unit, and 38 are on ventilators. Meanwhile, our positivity rate has increased slightly, but remains below the 5% mark. Right now, that rate stands at 2.4%. Right now, it's just about 437, and we're in the lower 70s. And still had police officers and protesters clash in Minnesota following the shooting death of Dante Wright during a traffic stop. Plus, lawmakers in Washington can continue to debate President Biden's $2.3 trillion infrastructure plan. And taking a look outside with live cam. Not as hot today, but we still have that humidity and possibly some rain. We'll check it with Mike later on. In the Minneapolis suburb of Brooklyn Center, police clashed with protesters for a second night last night. That's where a police officer fatally shot 20-year-old Dante Wright during a traffic stop over the weekend. The police chief says the officer had intended to fire a taser, not a handgun, as the man struggled with fellow officers. The chief described the shooting as an accidental discharge. The shooting has sparked unrest in an area already on edge due to the trial of the first four police officers charged in George Floyd's death. Hundreds of protesters faced off against police in Brooklyn Center after nightfall and hours after a curfew was announced by the governor. Several little girls who were dropped over a border wall in New Mexico last month are now closer to reuniting with their parents. Border Patrol says it has released them from custody after holding them for 13 days. That's more than the 72-hour legal limit. The agency says the kids are in good health. Ecuadorian officials say the girls' parents are in New York and have been in touch with their daughters. President Joe Biden wants Congress to know he's sincere about cutting a deal on infrastructure, but Republican lawmakers have deep-seated doubts about the scope of his proposed package. One of the core disputes is over what counts as infrastructure in its $2.3 trillion proposal. Also, there's a fundamental disagreement about whether the United States is losing its status atop the global economy because of its deteriorating infrastructure. Biden has now met with a bipartisan group of lawmakers and is insisting the Oval Office gathering was not window dressing. Fresh off of Sunday night's dramatic last second victory over the Mavericks, DeMar DeRozan and the Spurs took to the court in Orlando last night to face the Magic. San Antonio off to a slow start, but DeRozan managed to score 19 points in just three quarters of work. DeJounte Murray added 17, lifting the Spurs to a 120-97 victory over the Magic. These last two Spurs victories gave them their first consecutive win since a three-game streak back in the month of March. Spurs led 60 to 37 at the half by 30 during the third quarter and didn't allow the lead to fall blue 20 throughout the second half. Drozen made 7 of 11 shots for a Spurs squad that shot nearly 52%. This win pulls the Spurs within a half game of the Memphis Grizzlies for the number eight spot in the Western Conference. Up next, San Antonio takes on the Toronto Raptors tomorrow night in Tampa. Tip off is set for 630 on a side note. 
With an average age of 25 years and six months, this San Antonio team is the youngest that Coach Pop has guided since becoming head coach of the Silver and Black back in 1996. Oh, wow. But glad to see that they have another win. Couple wins, stringing together a couple of W's. Go Spurs go. Time now is 442 and 72 degrees right now. Still ahead, important things you need to know before you become the victim of unemployment fraud. And also next, Amazon now launching its own food and a snack brand. What this means for the way you buy groceries. And welcome back. It's 445. For years after purchasing Whole Foods, Amazon is now launching its own food and snack brand. ABC's Becky Worley has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, grocery game changer. Amazon launching a plenty, a food and snack brand that will eventually include hundreds of products that will sell online and in their Amazon retail stores. It all started with Whole Foods, right? And so once they, they you know, bought Whole Foods, then, you know, they decided that, hey, this is a good compliment. Amazon competing with Kirkland at Costco or Archer Farms at Target. By using the, the house brand, the consumer can save anywhere from 10 to 20 percent. Given their pricing on other house branded items like their Amazon Basics cables and batteries, grocery analysts expect them to become competitive. Amazon is the Goliath. And so unfortunately, they can come in and they can dominate, especially on, on the online uh, grocery space. But could it save you money? We do the math and compare prices. It's all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Becky Worley, ABC News, Oakland, California. As the state works to get unemployment money out quickly, hundreds of millions of dollars and ending up in the wrong hands, we're talking about fraud. One Hellotus man tells 12 on your size, Marilyn Morris, not only was he a victim, so were half a dozen other people on his street. The first mailbox mystery for Carl Wonke, four letters with his name, but his neighbor's address. And they were all from the Texas Workforce Commission. The second was when he opened them. I had filed for unemployment. Except he hadn't. I worked for myself. I didn't fire myself. One letter even showed Wonke had already received benefits, which he hadn't. Mine, they were paying $536 a week. It was a nice little chunk of change. Someone was cashing in using Wonke's identity, and it's not just him. Out of 4 million unemployment claims the Texas Workforce Commission received during the pandemic, they flagged 373,000 as suspicious. Compare that to 2019 when there were 1,100. It's been a big jump and the majority of those are identity theft. Cisco Gomez with the Texas Workforce Commission says most are caught before the money goes out, but not all. During the pandemic, the state paid out $577 million in suspected fake claims. We are working um, to prevent as many, um, any fraudulent claims going out because any money going out is too much money. He says the state is working to recoup the money, better verify IDs, and is asking the public to be on the lookout and not disregard any mail you might get from them. And if you suspect ID theft or fraud, you are urged to report it on their website. The concern for me is that they have your information. Wonky did, but now he wonders what else may be done using his good name. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Wow, that's a lot of money. I know. That's very discouraging to hear that. Hopefully they can fix some of that. That's right. Well, we've got the word out now, hopefully. 448 on your Tuesday morning. Go ahead and check in with Samuel King. How's it going this morning? Good morning, Stephanie and Mark. We have some good news here. It looks as though and the emergency vehicles are gone, so we can probably, and we just saw a car go through there, at the ramp at 37 and 35 has reopened after a rollover crash uh, just about an hour ago. Uh, so you can see it's smooth sailing uh, right now here uh, at this intersection. So we can pretty much take this off the board. Again, there is a rollover here at 37 and 35, but things are flowing smoothly now. Uh, take a look at the rest of the area. Not uh, too many issues or concerns. Uh, we do expect if it already hasn't happened already, this construction will be wrapping up for the overnight period, roughly five o'clock, but you see a little bit of a delay there still on Loop 410 West here at State Highway 151. Also up here on the north side, 1604 and 281, uh, even though this might be wrapping up for now, just a reminder that this is going to be happening overnight this week between 9 and 5 a.m. Still working on those flyover ramps to get them open. A lot of people have been asking when the ramps are finally going to open there between 1604 and 281 and vice versa. So hopefully this sort of work, they're able to do this and get those open soon, guys. 
All right, well, watch out for it. Thank you, Samuel. Before we get to uh, what happened with last night's storms, Mike has another KSAT Connect picture to share. Yeah, beautiful. Uh, yeah, when was the last time you heard Enchanted Rock? Got to go out there again. You know, I haven't been there since last summer. I think it's been a couple of years. For and of us. course, they were, you know, we were yeah. right in the, the heart of COVID and they, you know, you had to have reservations and all that stuff. Yeah, if you're going to any parks, by the way, just, you know, double check for any reservations. But yeah, it's just gorgeous out there and it was beautiful. Uh, I don't even think it's going to be that pretty as far as the uh, sunrise this morning. Got a lot of clouds hanging around here and still plenty of humidity. Boy, nothing has changed as far as that's concerned. All right, going back 12 hours on the satellite and radar loop. And yeah, those thunderstorms really started started to uh, pop up up to the north. Computer models did a pretty good job uh, handling this and indicating that most everything was going to be up to the north. And as they move through Lano County, a lot of reports of uh, tennis ball, baseball size hail up there in portions of Lano County. And that's where they all stayed. We didn't really get anything as far as any rain around uh, our area, basically. Maybe a couple of uh, showers out in uh, western portions of the hill country. A few little sprinkles are trying to show up on radar right now. It's not anything of any consequence, just that nuisance kind of stuff. And the humidity, of course, is still very, very high. And it's going to stay that way for the next couple of days. We're going to keep these dew point temperatures for the most part in the, the 60s. So you'll definitely feel it. A little bit drier air tries to come into portions of the hill country. And again, this is despite the fact we've got this uh, flow coming in here out of the northeast. So it stays kind of humid throughout most of the week, even though temperatures are going to be on the, the lower side around here. And then we'll get an actual front to come through just about the weekend and that should get rid of a lot of the uh, the humidity. So here's the water vapor imagery and you can see those thunderstorms that just blew up last night and we still keep enough moisture aloft and enough moisture down here at the ground to keep plenty of clouds around. One or two little sprinkly showers. I mean, uh, computer models aren't really bullish as far as rain is concerned, but we will see just a few of them as we go in through the uh, afternoon hours and then the evening and then tomorrow as well. One or two of those those showers going to be popping up around here. Uh, rain chances maybe 20% today, perhaps about 30% tomorrow. Still got some cooler air. I mean, it's 49 Oklahoma City right now, 57 in Dallas. And yeah, that cooler air will kind of kind of edge its way down in our direction. So what that's going to do is just keep things down to about normal now. Normal high temperature is 80 and that's what forecasting for today. So obviously with this very warm start, we're not going to be moving all that much. Think back to last week, we gained 35 close to 40 degrees between the low and the high. When we had really dry air. Not this situation where it's 70 right now or low 70s, upper 60s, 75 at noon, a shower or two and then 80 for high temperature today. But again, it is going to be humid, 10 degrees cooler than what it was yesterday. And then tomorrow, about the same situation, a uh, slightly better chance for some showers around here. 75 on Thursday and we'll stay uh, kind of in the mid upper 70s. Then we get the front moving through here for the weekend. That's going to knock us down into the 60s and uh, rain chances it won't rain constantly, but we do have that chance of rain each and every day for the rest of the week. So that's not bad. Not too bad. We'll prepare yeah. for that then. And nothing too hot. Just the humidity we got to deal with for the next couple of days. We can handle it. Thanks, Mike. 453. And still ahead, American Idol judge tests positive for COVID-19. And Will Smith's latest movie has a change of venue. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick three, four, two, three, fireball nine. Daily four, six, two, zero, six, fireball zero. Cash five, 16, 19, 24, 33, 35. And your Texas two-step, 1, 5, 10, 19, bonus ball 20. Welcome back. Famous country music star and American Idol coach has tested positive for COVID-19. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. If you missed Luke Bryan on last night's American Idol, he had a good excuse for being absent from the season's first live show, an actual doctor's note. Bryan tested positive for COVID-19. He's resting at home. Luke, we love you. Feel better. You are missed, okay? Idol producers had to scramble at the last minute to fill his chair, which was taken over by original Idol judge Paula Abdul. Uh, Bryan says he's doing well and looks forward to being at the show soon. The upcoming Will Smith movie, Emancipation, now the first movie to stop filming in Georgia because of the state's recently passed voter laws. Smith and director Antoine Fuqua say in a statement that they cannot in good conscience give money to a government that enacts regressive voting laws designed to restrict voter access. 
Emancipation will now shoot in Louisiana, where it's actually set. I'ma leave the door open. The door was open and Bruno Mars and Anderson Pack strolled right in. The duo, known as Silk Sonic, now have the number one song on the Billboard Hot 100 Singles chart with Leave the Door Open. It's Mars's eighth chart topper and Pack's first. And Billboard points out that it's the first song with the word door in the title to land at number one. And happy birthday today to Get Out and Girls star Allison Williams. She's 33. I'm so tired of being alone. I'm so tired. While 11 time Grammy winning singer Al Green is 75. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athens and ABC News, Los Angeles. Oh, I needed that this morning. A little Al yeah. Green going. Mm -hmm. Happy birthday. <laughs> 458, about 70 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, the latest on the Minnesota police shooting as officers clash with protesters for a second night. Plus, your pizza could soon drive and deliver itself to your door. We'll have details on a new delivery program from Domino's ahead in your morning Tech Bites. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Violence erupts for a second night on the streets of a Minneapolis suburb. I'm ABC's Faith Abubit with the latest on the deadly police shooting coming up. It is plenty humid this morning. Storms did not materialize last night, but that may be a good thing. There were some nasty ones out there across the Lone Star State, but rain chances are still on the way. We'll chat with Mike in just a moment. Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday. We've made it to April 13th. Hi, good morning. Thanks for being with us. Uh, you know what? That humidity will pay off, and so we need the rain. Yeah, and the good news is here, Mike, I guess the pattern is to spread rain chances out over several days. Yeah, now it doesn't mean it's going to rain constantly uh, or everyone will see it, but at least when you have that chance of rain all the way through the weekend, that's some, some fantastic news. Cloud cover is going to help to keep temperatures down somewhat, but again, that pesky humidity out there, at least we do have the humidity that can get squeezed out in the form of some rain. 71 right now, and that bottom number, 66. That's the dew point temperature, which means when it gets above 60, you feel it, and you're going to feel it when you step outside. We're only going to make it to 80 today. I say only. That's compared to yesterday's 90, but that's the normal high temperature. Obviously not a big span when you have such a warm start this morning. And the aquifer took a big hit yesterday, down nine-tenths of a foot. The allergens, uh, oak is still on the high side, but it came down substantially. Remember, the Sunday count was 40,000 plus. Now it's at 4,300. Still, like I said, on the high side. We got a couple little sprinkly showers that are trying to show up on radar. Maybe, you know, one or two of them out there. Uh, not much. There could be some mist. I really wouldn't get too excited about this this morning, but just keep in mind that there may be a sprinkle or two around the area. As far as uh, look ahead to the day, warm and humid. You have plenty of humidity out there. A couple of sprinkles this morning and a shower or two this afternoon as possible. Rain chances are 20%, so not that great. And then uh, tomorrow we'll have a few more showers, a couple of thunderstorms, slightly better rain chance, and that's going to be the situation going in through the rest of the week. A few showers, a few thunderstorms around here. Actually, rain chances are going to go up just a little bit and temperatures will continue to uh, go down. We'll sort of hover around mid 70s, some lower 70s and then drop into the 60s once we get in toward the weekend and we'll get rid of the humidity then. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Samuel King, you had a big problem last half hour. Is that still around? Well, the problem downtown, Mike, is uh, cleared up, but we still have some construction here on the west side. Good morning to you, Mike, and good morning to everyone out there. This is a view from 410 at Culebra. There is some overnight construction uh, this week on Loop 410 on the west side. You can still see uh, some vehicles out there at uh, this intersection. I was actually closed at military, and we still see some of uh, the lazier approaching military down to 48 miles per hour. Uh, so hopefully pretty soon this uh, gets wrapped up for the morning, but this is going to be happening overnight this week. Looking uh, throughout the rest of the area, we did have that situation uh, downtown here at 37 and 35, but again, that has been cleared up and travel times for the most part in the green, including 25 minutes from New Braunfels right now on 35 and 25 minutes from I-10 from Bernie. We'll have another check of traffic coming up in a few minutes, guys. Chaotic moments overnight as demonstrators took to the streets of Minnesota again in the protest of a police officer who shot and killed a 20 year old driver during a traffic stop. The incident happening just 10 miles from where former officer Derek Chauvin is on trial for the death of George Floyd. ABC's Faith Abube has the latest for us this morning. 
Overnight, police in riot gear deploying flashbangs and pepper balls as anger spilled onto the streets of Brooklyn Center, a suburb of Minneapolis. Some in the crowd breaking into local businesses and looting. The calls for justice for Dante Wright echoing late into the night. New police body cam footage now showing the moments officers struggled with the 20-year-old after pulling him over Sunday afternoon, first for an expired vehicle registration and then realizing Wright had an outstanding warrant for a misdemeanor charge. As Wright tries to get in his car, you can hear an officer yelling, Taser! taser, taser, taser. But instead of a taser, Officer Kim Potter, a 26-year veteran of the police force, pulls out a gun, firing a single shot. Wright's car traveling several blocks before crashing. The police chief calling the shooting an accidental discharge. It is my belief that the officer had the intention to deploy their taser, but instead shot Mr. Wright with a single bullet. Potter now on administrative leave. The mayor of Brooklyn Center saying he supports relieving her of her duties. We cannot afford to make mistakes that lead to uh, the loss of life. The incident unfolding as former officer Derek Chauvin is on trial for George Floyd's murder just 10 miles away. It doesn't need to be this way. A 20 year old dad, a family devastated and a community on edge. Wright's family calling for peace as they grieve. They don't want all of this, all of this. I just want my baby home. He wanted to be known. Not this way. And President Biden has denounced the violence and the looting on the streets of Brooklyn Center. He says he has not called Dante Wright's family, but they are in his prayers. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. Right now it's 5.06. If you haven't registered a vehicle in Texas time, your time to do so is about to run out. A temporary waiver on registrations and other vehicle requirements was made in March of 2020 due to the pandemic. Sarah Costa is live downtown with what you need to know now. Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Well, the Bear County Tax Office says your grace period to get your papers in order for your vehicle is about to run out. The Bear County Tax Office announced on Monday that that temporary waiver that did away with the requirement to renew vehicle registrations, title transfers, and disabled placards will end at 11.59 p.m. on Wednesday. The temporary requirement had been temporarily waived by the state when the COVID-19 pandemic began in March of 2020. The Bear County Tax Office remained open throughout the shutdown, and as a result, the majority of residents have current registrations. However, approximately 75,000 motorists still need to register before the waiver period ends. If you are one of them, title transfers and registration renewals can be obtained inside any of the four tax office locations. People can also get their registration renewals and disabled placards at the drive through at 3505 Pleasanton Road. All offices are open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4.45 p.m. with the exception of Wednesday, which has extended business hours until 6.30 p.m. Also, registrations can be renewed at any of HEB locations or you can go online at www.txdmv.gov. Live from downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. When it comes to the coronavirus and the classroom, there are changes coming to one local school district. Northeast ISD is loosening restrictions. District board members voted to pass the modified COVID-19 protocols. They include allowing students the option to remove masks during recess and during outdoor PE as long as students remain socially distant. Parent meetings can be held in person and the new protocols would also allow visitors in the building with a 50% capacity per room. Classroom supplies can be shared as long as they are disinfected for each use. And the protocols also say close contacts of a case of coronavirus would be handled differently for employees and students who are fully vaccinated. If they are not showing symptoms, they would not need to quarantine. Case okay, teaming up with the San Antonio Report and Bear Facts to bring you a forum on the race for San Antonio mayor. The three night series will all start later today. Candidates incumbent Ron Nirenberg, former Councilman Greg Brockhouse and Denise Gutierrez Homer are all participating. We've received several of your questions online at KSAT.com. So what answers do each of these mayoral candidates have to provide? Well, the forum will take place over a course of three nights with each night dedicated to an individual candidate. We will kick off the series later today at 6.30 p.m. right here on KSAT 12 with incumbent Ron Nierenberg and our KSAT Q&A. That forum will then continue online from about 7 to 7.30 on KSAT.com, on our Facebook page, and on the KSAT TV app. 
Brock House will have his forum Wednesday. Gutierrez Homer will have her forum on Thursday. And time now is 5.09 and it's about 72 degrees right now. Still ahead, the FCC needs your help with a new app to help measure internet speeds across the country. Also next, if you need to get your child to the hospital quickly, we're going to tell you why you shouldn't take them to a normal emergency room. And outside with live cam, an update on those spring rain chances in the coming days with Mike Ostrage as you take a live look over there at 410 by San Antonio International Airport. More on that in traffic with Samuel coming up. 513 on your Tuesday morning. If you need to rush your child to the hospital, you shouldn't take them to a normal emergency room. That's because going to the ER at a children's hospital is highly recommended. Dr. Jindy Haug, a pediatric emergency medicine physician at the Children's Hospital of San Antonio, says the difference in care could have a big impact on your child. She says the bodies of adults and kids are not the same, and all the doctors at a children's hospital know how to treat kids more efficiently. For instance, a baby with a fever needs much more interventions than an adult who maybe has the same fever and same illness. So there's a lot of different considerations. So it's definitely safer to take your child to a pediatric ER, and I highly recommend it. Dr. Haug also says a children's hospital knows how to handle a child's emotions that can make it easier on the kids and help them recover or understand a procedure in their own terms. You can read more about this on KSET.com. 514, about 70 degrees. And still ahead, how you can help the FCC in an effort to try to increase internet speeds across the country. And we'll show you Domino's newest high-tech way to deliver pizza straight to your door, debuting right here in Texas. Managing type 2 diabetes? You're on it. You may think you're doing all you can to manage type 2 diabetes and heart disease, but could your medication do more to lower your heart risk? Jardians can reduce the risk of cardiovascular death for adults who also have known heart disease, so it could help save your life from a heart attack or stroke. And Jardians lowers A1C. Jardians can cause serious side effects, including dehydration, genital yeast or urinary tract infections, and sudden kidney problems. Ketoacidosis is a serious side effect that may be fatal. A rare but life-threatening bacterial infection in the skin of the perineum could occur. Stop taking Jardians and call your doctor right away if you have symptoms of this bacterial infection, ketoacidosis, or an allergic reaction. And don't take it if you're on dialysis or have severe kidney problems. Taking Jardians with a sulfonuria or insulin may cause low blood sugar. Lower A1C and lower risk of a fatal heart attack? On it with Jardians. We're committed to making Jardians available and affordable. With our savings card, eligible patients pay as little as $10. Now 517, the FCC is asking Americans to use its speed test app to help improve internet speeds across the country. ABC's Kenneth Moten has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, a more accurate picture of the nation's broadband capability. The FCC has developed a new speed test app and is asking you to test your internet speed with it. The agency says using the app will help it determine what areas need more broadband resources. Intel is set to work with automakers to create special chips for cars. The offer came out of a White House summit to address a worldwide shortage of the key component. Intel's CEO also announced the company will invest $20 billion in two new Arizona plants. A self-driving car is now delivering pizza. Domino's has teamed up with the autonomous car company Neuro. Customers in a Houston neighborhood can order online, then punch in a special code when the car arrives. Voila, the doors open up with hot pizza. And those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. It's going to be an everyday thing in just about 20 years. I know, but right now it's just making me hungry. Thinking uh, is about, it? Yeah, yeah. Just thinking about pizza. Would we right order now. pizza just to see if the thing shows up? <laughs> I don't, eh, 519, I don't think so. No, not now. Too, too but, early. But maybe later. Yeah. Let's check out traffic. Samuel standing by in the traffic lab with uh, delivering more than pizza. <laughs> yes, trying to get people where they're uh, going safely and quickly and all that stuff. And what we're seeing here is 410 at uh, Culebra, some residual construction uh, from overnight. The machines and the vehicles have been on the move as we move over here to give you a better look at what's uh, going on here on uh, Loop 410. So they've been doing uh, this work for, for several weeks now. So you see 
uh, still there, but the delays aren't there anymore. We were down to 48 miles per hour. Now we're back up to 63 miles per hour. So that's good news as the commute continues to get going. Other than that, looking at the map, not much going on uh, right now, except for sort of that construction there on the west side on Loop 410. Uh, looking at Bandera Road this morning, traffic times look good in both directions, nine miles per hour. And again, uh, this should be uh, wrapping up shortly for the night, but this is uh, going on for the rest of this week, starting about nine in the evening and running through this time uh, the following morning, guys. Well, watch out for it. Thank you, Samuel. I'm assuming that car has like a, a built-in radius. The pizza. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. <laughs> you can't really go too you know, far. Here, yeah. call it and try and have it deliver pizza from Houston over here. So. No. It, it won't happen. No. No. <laughs> try it. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So. Hey, uh, good looking uh, <laughs> sunset last night. Strangely beautiful. That's a good way to describe it. Gorgeous out there. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. And uh, going to keep a lot of clouds around pretty much all week long. We'll have limited sunshine here and there. Actually, yesterday and had more sunshine than what I uh, had expected. But one thing for sure, the humidity has definitely stuck around. Now, we do have a couple of little sprinkly showers that are showing up. Maybe portions of the uh, the hill country right there. One or two of them off to the east. This is just some clutter around the, the radar site right there. Obviously, it's not much. Um, the storms last night stayed well up to the north of us. And boy, there were some doozies up there. A lot of reports of a tennis ball to baseball size hail up in Lano County, just to the west of Austin. All right, as far as the humidity and dew point temperatures, measure moisture in the atmosphere. Yeah, it's going to stay humid for the next few days, despite the fact temperatures. So it's not one of those where we get a front coming through and gets rid of the humidity right away. So temperatures will be on the cooler side, 70s, uh, 80 today, but mid to low 70s as we go on through the rest of the week. But the humidity is going to be staying up there. However, by Friday night, Saturday, it looks like we're going to get a more potent front moving through here, and that's going to knock the humidity out. So it'll be more comfortable this weekend, but we will keep the humidity around throughout the uh, most of the week, although it is going to get squeezed out in the form of some rain. Now, this does not mean it's going to rain constantly. And again, this computer model tends to kind of, you know, broad brush things, but you can take away from it the the chance for some showers out there. Maybe uh, one or two of them left over later on this afternoon. Kind of doubtful, but we'll start to pick up again tomorrow morning. A couple of showers scattered about here and there, and then throughout the afternoon, even a few thunderstorms mixed on in. Again, same thing on Thursday as well as on Friday. It looks like rain chances may start to go up then a little bit, uh, even as we go on in toward the weekend. So again, not constantly, but at least that chance of rain is there. And unlike last week where, yeah, we started off pretty good and then really skyrocketed with temperatures, sort of the opposite, 90 yesterday, and now it's going down throughout the rest of the week. 875, pardon me, today at noon, mostly cloudy skies. A couple of uh, showers here and there. And then a high temperature up to 80. That's the normal high, the average high temperature, mostly cloudy. Again, a shower is possible, not very likely. And over the next couple of days, temperatures will again stay about mid or so 70s, maybe some upper 70s here and there. Low temperatures are going to be staying in the low 60s. It's a good indication that we do have some humidity hanging around here. And then we get in toward the weekend and temperatures drop down into the 60s with lows down in the low 50s around here. So again, chance of rain, not constantly, but at least we'll have some out there. Hopefully we get a decent shower here. Yeah, our lawns need a drink, the wildflowers, yeah, yeah. everything. Everything's could, could pretty dry some, right now. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. Uh, 523. And still ahead in your morning spotlight, the latest Shazam movie shows off its new supervillain casting, plus details on a new Janet Jackson auction. Here are your pick three numbers, 423, Fireball 9, Daily 4, 6206, Fireball 0. Cash 5, 16, 19, 24, 33, 35. And your Texas two-step, 1, 5, 10, 19, bonus ball 20. DC Comics Shazam gets a new villain, and Janet Jackson auctions off some of her most iconic memorabilia. Here's CNN's Rick Damagella with the Hollywood Minute. Is Captain Sparkle Fingers? No, it's not. It's not my. That's not my name. Shazam faces off against one of Charlie's angels. Lucy Liu has been cast in Shazam: Fury of the Gods as the villainous Calypso, who is the daughter of a Greek god. She joins Helen Mirren and returning titular star Zachary Levi in the upcoming sequel, which is scheduled to open in June 2023. <laughs> 
<laughs> Janet Jackson fans can now bring the Rhythm Nation home. The legendary singer is auctioning off over a thousand personal items, including a wedding dress and outfits she wore in the Scream music video alongside her brother Michael. The event will take place beginning May 14th, and part of the proceeds will go towards a global child advocacy charity. You gotta get in the van if you wanna make it in this business. Talk about an all-star lineup. Dave Grohl has assembled a slew of his famous friends to take part in his new documentary, What Drives Us. This is your first look at the flick, which will feature appearances by fellow rock stars like Ringo Starr, Steven Tyler, The Edge, and Slash. Fans can rock out when the doc is released on April 30th. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. I can't believe you didn't say, like, rocking out in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. <laughs> Doesn't he normally have yeah. some little catchy phrase? I think he was probably tired on the Tuesday morning. It was an off day, I guess. Yeah. 527, about 70 degrees. Glad you're with us. And still ahead on GMSA, protests continue in Brooklyn Center, Minnesota, for the second consecutive night after a police officer fatally shot Dante Wright during a traffic stop. Plus, can you truly tell the difference between allergies and COVID? We talked to an allergist to get what you need to know. Hi, good morning. It is Tuesday, April 13th. Thanks for joining us. Uh, the storms missed us last night, and that was a good thing. We did not need a repeat of five years ago when we had that wicked hailstorm that caused millions of dollars in damage right here in San Antonio, Mike. Yeah, yesterday was the anniversary of that, but up in uh, Llano County, a lot of reports of uh, tennis ball, baseball size hail up there. Uh, it, there were only just a, a couple of storm cells that were produced by that uh, system that moved on through. One thing, it's still really humid out there, and we do have a couple a little uh, sprinkly showers that are trying to show up on radar. Not really a lot. Temperature 71 degrees. We are still well above normal, well above the average temperature, which is uh, upper 50s, and the dew point remains in the mid 60s. It stays above 60. You uh, feel the humidity when you step outside. Temperatures even out in the hill country still uh, basically mid and some upper 60s around here, and 71 in town. And here's uh, well, maybe those are a couple little sprinkly showers scattered about here and there. Not really any any big deal. This is some clutter right around there, right around the radar site. Um, there will be one or two showers later on today, and that's pretty much going to be about it. Oak is on the high side, but remember, it came down from that 40,000 plus reading on Sunday. Throughout the rest of today, 75 at noon, 80 for high temperature. One thing, uh, you know, think back to just a few days ago when we had the span of 35, 40 degrees from the low to the high with the really dry air in place. Well, we have this warm start. We have all the humidity out there. We're only going to gain about 10 degrees throughout the day, but that is pretty much a normal temperature and 10 below where it was yesterday. Kind of breezy wind out of the northeast. We'll keep some humidity around here, but at least we keep a rain chance around going into the next couple of days and cooler temperatures. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Samuel King. What's the latest, sir? Well, things are looking pretty good on the roads right now. A quick look at your travel times. You're coming in from Bernie and I-10, 24 minutes, 27 minutes on 281, coming in from Boulevard in 25 minutes on I-35 from the New Braunfels area to downtown San Antonio. So the roads are nice and green, as we can see uh, here on this uh, map this morning. Not much going on. So let's take a look here on uh, Northwest Side and Fredericksburg Road between Hebner and Woodlawn. If you travel that stretch, 12 minutes to 13 minutes in both directions this morning. So if your commute takes you uh, that way, not too many delays. And here's a look at Transguide 410 at Jackson Keller over at 410 on the west side. We had some construction, but they have cleared that for the morning. And we'll have another update coming up. Thank you, Sam. Today in Minneapolis, the defense in the Derek Chauvin trials expected to start making their case. And as CNN's Brett Conway reports, just miles down the road, another death and another police officer's actions are being thrown into question. Nobody should have to feel this pain. A family grieving. <laughs> After 20-year-old Dante Wright was shot and killed by police during a traffic stop, now a city outraged. This was an accidental discharge. But Dante's aunt, Naisha Wright, doesn't buy it. You mean to tell me you thought it was a taser? <laughs> Do you know how that feel for my, me to hear my brother call out for his son? Just miles away, former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin stands trial accused of killing George Floyd less than a year ago. I'm not a bad guy, man. <laughs> Well, it hasn't even been a year ever since he passed, and it's already we lost another black man to police. 
Calls for justice, calls for change. Multiple counties were under a curfew last night. Still, people gathered outside the Brooklyn Center police station again. Police and protesters amid tear gas, flashbangs, even fireworks. There was looting, property damage, and dozens of arrests. Emotions running high in the streets, in the courtroom, and in hearts. We're too young to be seeing our other black folk pass to police brutality. And I don't like it. I'm here today to stand on it. I'm Britt Conway reporting. Also making headlines this morning, Japan plans to release treated wastewater into the sea from the Fukushima nuclear plant. The water was contaminated after the 2011 nuclear disaster. Japan's prime minister made the announcement during a meeting with ministers today. Both China and South Korea say they have grave concerns over the move, but Japan insists the water is safe. Japan says the water will be released into the sea in two years pending approval. There are fewer unaccompanied minors in the custody of the U.S. Customs and Border Protection. That's according to the most recent data from the federal government. The Biden White House says it's attempting to find better facilities to hold the children after hearing complaints about overcrowding. There were just over 3,100 ch children in CPB custody as of Sunday, nearly half the amount from late March. Average time for unaccompanied migrants in CPB custody is about 122 hours, which is higher than the 72-hour legal limit. They are then turned over to the Department of Health and Human Services until a sponsor or guardian can be located. He was spending around $62 million per week to care for these children. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention investigating ground turkey products that appear to be infecting consumers with salmonella. They came from Plainville brands and were sold in multiple states under the names Nature's Promise, Wigman, and Plainville Farms. The raw meat items have the establishment number P244 and are dated January 1st to 10th of this year. They're not in stores now, but could be in customers' freezers. According to the CDC, at least 28 people in 12 states have gotten sick in connection to this turkey. No one has died, but people have been hospitalized. Right now, it's 536. We're about 70 degrees. And still ahead, while allergies are a common thing this time of year, you may also be wondering if some of those symptoms could be COVID. We're going to take a look at the difference. Plus, how brand new research is offering hope to stroke victims. And taking a look outside with live cam, it's actually a humid 71 degrees right now, but we are expecting rain on and off throughout this week. We'll be right back. The oak pollen count in San Antonio has been at record highs over the past few days, and that may be making your allergies go crazy. Ursula Perry has what you need to know when it comes to spring allergies and COVID-19. Oak pollen, grass, dust, pets, or COVID. Which one is causing your itchy, watery eyes and runny nose? If you have these symptoms, most likely it is not caused by COVID. Environmental allergies, um, typically you would have uh, itchy runny eyes, itchy runny nose, sneezing attacks. COVID-19 rarely causes a runny nose or sneezes, and it doesn't cause itchiness. But COVID can cause fever, chills, muscle aches, and pains, while allergies do not. Also, GI symptoms is not something we normally see with uh, environmental allergies. If you're experiencing nausea, vomiting, or diarrhea, do check to see if you have other symptoms related to COVID. Dr. Raha says okay. that having allergies does put people at greater risk for serious COVID. Okay. It's all about inflammation. So the more inflamed you are, uh, the more likely you would be to have more serious effects if you were to contract the COVID-19 virus. So stay away from allergy triggers. And if that doesn't work, you need to consult an allergist for medication right away. Here's the difficult part. You can have COVID-19 and your regular allergy symptoms at the same time, and one will complicate the other most times. That's why if you have your allergy symptoms plus fever and chills, you need to see a doctor. Ursula Perry, KSAT 12 News. And time now is 541 and it's about 72 degrees right now. Nike wants your old shoes. We have details on the company's uh, new refurbished shoes program. Every year, nearly 800,000 Americans suffer a stroke. And strokes are the leading cause of serious long-term disabilities in the U.S. However, CNN's Mandy Gaither reports new research is offering some hope. 
One in three stroke victims never call 911, according to the CDC, delaying critical care. By the time that they get treated, uh, potentially uh, there's been already significant damage to, to the brain tissue because of the lack of, of blood supply. That damage can cause a number of problems, including paralysis, speech impairment, and loss of motor function. Right now, the current standard of treatment for a stroke uh, is basically uh, trying to get rid of a clot uh, that, that's uh, basically blocking uh, blood supply to the brain. In a study published in the journal Science Advances, researchers at Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center have developed a technology to introduce genetic material into cells. They say this might make a delay in care less damaging as it allows them to reprogram skin cells. With our cocktail, we can sort of tell or, or, or teach those cells to become uh, blood vessel cells. Once injected into mice that had suffered a stroke, lead researcher Daniel Gallego Perez says they saw signs of brain tissue repair. When we looked at the behavior of these mice as well, um, they, they regain motor function significantly. I think the implications for, for uh, humans, treating humans with this are, are, are big. More research will need to be done into how this treatment works in mice before the study is scaled up to include larger animals testing for safety and efficacy. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. In your morning consumer headlines, do you have some old Nike shoes that have been sitting in your closet? Well, you might be able to give them back. Nike has announced it's accepting newly bought shoes that have been gently worn or have a manufacturing flaw. Shoes have to be returned within a 60-day window from the date of purchase. The company will then clean, fix them up, and resell them at select stores at bargain prices. Eight Nike stores in the U.S. are selling the refurbished shoes, but there are plans to sell them at 15 locations by the end of April. The company says it started the resell program to help reduce its waste footprint. Nike also says some of the return shoes will be donated and others that are beyond repair will be recycled. MasterCard will let you know your carbon footprint based on what you purchase. The credit card companies have created a calculator to understand how spending habits contribute to carbon emissions. The tool doesn't track individual transactions. Instead, it focuses on specific spending categories, calculates the impact of transactions by using an average footprint for different industries. This is MasterCard's latest move to be more sustainable. The company plans to reach net zero emissions by the year 2050. And grab some lettered tiles in honor of National Scrabble Day. The legendary board game, which is played internationally, was first named Lexico before the creator finally settled on its now familiar title. More than 150 million Scrabble boards have been sold over the past few decades, and they can be found in roughly a third of all U.S. households. Scrabble also made it to the small screen in 1984 as a daytime game show and is also a 2004 inductee of the National Toy Hall of Fame. That could be a fun game. Yeah, it is. I was like, we need a new one. I, I, we used to have one growing up, and now we need one in our household. It's time. Mm -hmm. Let's see how traffic is looking right now. It is 547. Samuel, what's up over there? Uh, things uh, mostly uh, looking uh, pretty good, and especially in the San Antonio, Mark, and Stephanie, San Antonio area, I should say. Uh, a lot of green on the map. But if you are heading uh, up to the north today, maybe to San Marcos or Austin uh, this morning, something to uh, look out for. Major delay on 35 here in San Marcos. We'll try to find out some more information on this. But we just uh, noticed that you're down 11 miles per hour. So, again, if you are heading north uh, today, uh, that's something to look out for in Hayes County. Uh, here on the south side, this is 16 four between 281 and 35 15 minutes each way we bring this up because there will be some construction again this week here right around 35 to Benton City Road on Loop 64 in the south side some alternating uh, lane closures there so uh, that'll be something to watch out for uh, this uh, this week uh, there are some uh, various construction projects uh, throughout the week here so uh, that's something to look out for across the area and here's a look at Transky downtown had some issues here earlier uh, this morning but 35 and say the Chavez looks like it is moving fine. And let's try to get one more Transguide camera here. Uh, 410 at Rolling Ridge also flowing well this morning. Guys, over to you. Thank you, Samuel. And Mike, I see you have a beautiful picture to coordinate with the color of your tie. Oh, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> well, the, the, the three of us, it's like purple and lavender. Yes, day today, so. very nice. We all got the memo. Okay. Yeah. What's, what's a, you pick the color for tomorrow, Sam. Oh. I'll think about it. 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, beautiful picture out there, breathtaking sunset over Medina Lake. And uh, sunrise this morning is not going to be anything to really write home about. A lot of clouds, a ton of humidity. Of course, we had that chance for some rain last night. All those storms missed us well up there to the uh, to the north. And boy, it was getting really nasty way up uh, in Llano County with the huge hail. Right now, we've got a couple little... Oh, just some sprinkly showers out there. This is some clutter right over there around the the radar site. And uh, here's the satellite and radar loop going back 12 hours. And as this loops on through, and the computer models did a pretty good job handling this and keeping everything primarily uh, up to the north. Now, it did have a couple of storms moving through Gillespie County, but it was the cell right up there just by that banner. And watch it goes through one more time. And that produced again that uh, tennis ball to baseball size hail nothing left over in behind it high temperatures yesterday we did have a little bit more sunshine or a lot more sunshine than uh, honestly what I expected and high temperatures got up into the low 90s 92 here in town pleasant to 96 99 in Catula now today big change 10 degrees lower than that we'll stay in the low 70s in portions of the hill country going for 80 here in town so upper 70s to 80 this is a normal high temperature this time of year the average high temperature and as far as rain chances uh you know one or two little showers around here rain's not going to be a huge deal today a uh, 20 percent chance of a shower here and there about the same tomorrow maybe a slightly better chance to see one or two showers out there and then we'll have a somewhat better chance <clears throat> excuse me on Thursday, even a couple of uh, thunderstorms thrown on in there, and then we'll still keep the rain chances going into Friday and even on into the weekend. Now, the upper level winds got a big low up there, obviously right around the uh, western Great Lakes, and uh, for us, it's almost this kind of zonal pattern here, which means not anything as far as big rainmakers. Uh, temperatures pretty close to normal, but as the week progresses, we are going to see this low move across here. Now we still keep a lot of humidity around through pretty much the rest of the week, even though temperatures are going to be slowly declining. And then by Friday late into Saturday, this is actually going to pull a little bit more of a, I guess I'll call it a substantial front moving through here. It's going to get rid of the humidity for the weekend and also knock temperatures down another few notches. So it will, dare I say, be on the, the cool side for high temperatures this upcoming weekend. Today, normal, but a lot of humidity. 75 degrees, mostly cloudy skies. Again, a shower or two is going to be possible today. Not very likely. 80 for a high temperature. Again, one or two showers out there. Tomorrow, we'll have a lot more in the way of uh, clouds hanging around here. 30% uh, chance for a few showers, a couple of thunderstorms. Same thing on Thursday. Temperatures stay thanks to the cloud cover and some other factors in the uh, roughly mid to upper 70s. And then that next front's going to move through here and weekend. We'll be in the 60s and uh, yeah, get rid of the humidity. Lows and low 50s by Sunday morning. 50 on Monday morning. That's going to be chilly compared to what we've had lately. Yeah. It's going to be nice, too. All right. Good change from especially yesterday afternoon. And, yeah, hitting up 90 again. But yes. like I said, it, clouds did clear out a lot more than I'd expect preceding some of that, uh, that rain that moved in up to the north. Very good. Thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Michael. We appreciate it right now. 552. And a band whose debut album was named one of the 100 greatest metal albums of all time by Rolling Stone is the subject of a new documentary. We're going to have a preview next. Good morning. Coming up on GMA, protests in the streets of Minneapolis over the police killing of Dante Wright, which happened just miles from where George Floyd was killed last summer. New details about how it happened and what we're learning about the officer involved. Dante's family joins us live this morning in an ABC News exclusive. It's all coming up right here, only on GMA. We'll see you soon. Life of agony, hail from Brooklyn in New York. We've been best friends our whole life. That's real family. The band Life of Agony is the subject of the deep dive documentary, The Sound of Scars. We didn't want to make a, you know, a sequential, uh, linear uh, music documentary. We really wanted to tap into what makes us tick and um, why this thing really saved our lives. Among the band member stories, singer Mina Caputo discusses her gender transition and how fans reacted. I'm emotional. I'm sensitive. So it wasn't difficult. Um, 
it, it was just natural, pretty much, you know. Well, the very first time that we took the stage with Mina, fronting the band, was in Belgium. I think there's a sequence in the film where uh, a fan in a wheelchair rode the crowd and she greeted him uh, when he came over at the barricades. Uh, it was electric. Mina came out of her shell. It's more about the, the people behind the music and the friendship and the love and the devotion and the loyalty. People change and people evolve over time. And I think that's kind of Russian, the basis of what this film is about. You can feel the momentum of the band just growing and growing. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Like Millions of people around the world suffer from depression and anxiety. Ahead on GMSA, we're sharing psychology secrets for answering the question, am I really okay? Transguide cameras around town are showing traffic starting to pick up just a bit here and there. There's Loop 410 over at Culebra. Quite a bit of traffic at 281 and winding way, but the roads are dry. The storms missed us, but rain is still in the forecast. Mike and Samuel have more coming up at the top of the hour. Another city in our surrounding viewing area is opening up a COVID-19 vaccine clinic this week. I'm Sarah Acosta coming up on GMSA, how you can register. Northeast ISD making some changes. Find out what new protocols will be adopted in schools across that district. And taking a look outside with live cam, it's a humid 71 degrees out there, but you know what? It's not as hot as it was yesterday and we're expecting some rain. Live from Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday, April 13th. Happy Tuesday. Hope you're having a good week so far, right? Monday, hope it was good. <laughs> Big storms missed us last night, which is a good thing because some did form way northwest of San Antonio as Mike Osterhage joins us now. And those storms were throwing some big hail. Yeah, looking back at uh, one of the, uh, the chat sites we have with the National Weather Service and a lot of observers up there around uh, Lano County were talking about tennis ball and baseball sized hail because that was in the, the forecast, the significant hail threat. Mm -hmm with those storms. Um, yeah, all that is gone. We, you know, what's left over is no, not really any big change. Temperatures this afternoon are going to be lower, but this morning you walk outside, it's like it's hot and humid. And we're way above normal again. Uh, we do have a couple little sprinkles, if you will. I mean, there may be some, this is just clutter around the radar site, perhaps a few little, uh, you know, spits and drizzles, sprinkles here and there. Not any real big deal. And don't get real excited about rain chances today. I mean, there is the chance for a few showers out there, but it's um, say 20% if that. Now we will see more rain chances throughout the rest of the week and they're going to go up slightly. Uh, as far as oak is concerned, that can go down any time now. It did go down significantly yesterday compared to the day before on Sunday when it was 40,000 might as well be 4 million. <laughs> it was that high, high as it had been in about 26 years. Today, uh, steady temperatures this morning, cloudy skies, a uh, little bit of uh, some light sprinkles here and there. Wind is going to start to pick up somewhat out of the uh, northeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. It's really not going to be getting rid of the humidity yet. We'll still have plenty of humidity hanging around here today and the next couple of days. 75 at noon and then a high temperature today. Make it up to 80. Some sunshine kind of thrown on in here as well. And again, a shower or two too, but not really a big deal. Uh, this week, uh, this week, pardon me, the trend is going to be for temperatures to decline and rain chances to slightly go up just a little bit. So no more heat waves, no 90s in the forecast for the next few days. More details coming up and a closer look at the weekend in just a few minutes. Traffic Authority, Samuel King. Anything big going on? Nothing uh, big going on in immediate San Antonio area right now. Just some a few uh, issues here and there this morning, and that's a good news if you're just starting your day and about to start your commute. Uh, we did have a bit of a delay here on 1604 heading uh, toward I-35, but that is quickly improving. So uh, good news there in that area. Looking at some travel times if you're coming in from New Braunfels on 35, 25 minutes into downtown, 28 minutes from Seguin, 28 minutes on 37 from the Pleasanton area. And this is a look at Transguide 410 at Cherry Ridge. We do have a stalled vehicle there on the crossroads area to watch out for. Other than that, uh, things relatively quiet this morning. And we'll have another update coming up. Mark, Stephanie. Thank you, Samuel. San Antonio police need your help finding a woman they say was involved in a robbery. So take a look at your screen. Police say this woman robbed a five below store on Austin Highway near Van Diver. This happened back 
On April 5th, they say this woman ran away with some items from the store. If you recognize her, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number on your screen, 210-224-STOP. If you're still looking for a place to get your COVID-19 vaccine, a San Antonio suburb is opening up shop this week with more vaccines. City of Shirts can be added to the list of places where you can get vaccinated. Sarah Costa is live downtown with how you can register. Hey, Sarah. Good morning, Mark. Yeah, the City of Shirts announced yesterday that they're going to be hosting two different COVID-19 vaccine clinics this week and possibly more in the future. Appointments are required and walk-ups will not be accepted. Now, appointments are currently available for the Moderna vaccine at these clinics starting tomorrow, April 14th and Friday, April 16th. Registration for the vaccine clinics will remain open until all appointments are filled. City officials say that anyone over the age of 18 can register for an appointment online right now at shirts.com slash COVID vaccine. The vaccine clinics will be held at the Shirts Civic Center, which is located at 1400 Shirts Parkway, building number five. For assistance with registering for the notifications, you can call 210-619-1000. And residents are also encouraged to sign up through Civic Ready to receive notifications about upcoming clinics at shirts.com slash alerts. Of course, you can head to ksat.com right now to find all of this information about these clinics and shirts. And also online, we have other information about where you, another, another, another locations where you can find COVID-19 vaccine clinics. Live from Towntown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. Here at home, health officials are reporting 317 new cases of COVID-19 in Bear County and no new deaths. Mayor Ron Nirenberg says the seven-day moving average is now at 232 cases per day. He also says the positivity rate is up slightly from last week and is now at 2.4%. Despite that, San Antonio's positivity rate is still the lowest out of all Texas metro areas. Northeast ISD here in San Antonio is loosening its COVID restrictions. District board members voted to pass the modified protocols yesterday. Students will now have the option to remove their masks during recess and outdoor PE sessions as long as they remain socially distant. Parent meetings can be held in person and visitors are now allowed in buildings with a 50% capacity per room. Classroom supplies can also be shared, but they'll need to be disinfected for each use. District will also handle contact tracing differently for employees and staff who are fully vaccinated. If they do not show symptoms, they will not need to quarantine. There's a growing debate over whether more shutdowns are needed to address the COVID crisis in the upper Midwest. Even though more than 20% of Americans are now fully vaccinated, infections are surging in some areas, especially Michigan. ABC's Faith Abube has the latest. This morning, a blunt message from the CDC director to state leaders in Michigan, pleading with them to shut the state down amid skyrocketing COVID cases. Really what we need to do in those situations is shut things down. Michigan's governor is requesting more vaccines. She says doubling down on vaccine distribution to achieve 70% herd immunity is the answer. We've got to grit our teeth and keep moving forward. We're making great progress. We are getting close. But the White House says a so-called whack-a-mole approach with vaccine shipments won't work because it would take up to six weeks to send the state more doses. Instead, the CDC is sending Michigan a surge team to help FEMA with vaccinations. And the agency's director is calling for stronger restrictions in the state. Go back to our basics, to go back to where we were last spring, um, last summer, and to, to shut things down, to flatten the curve. Across the country, the daily case average is now at peak summer surge levels, about 66,000 cases per day. Experts say looser restrictions and more contagious variants of the virus are driving the spike. A new study says the UK variant, the now dominant strain in the US, is more transmissible but likely does not cause more severe disease. And meanwhile, FEMA is now accepting applications for COVID funeral reimbursement. Officials say within the first 90 minutes of applications being opened, they received nearly a million calls. In Washington, Faith Abube ABC News. KSAT is teaming up with the San Antonio Report and Bear Facts to bring you a form in the race for San Antonio Mayor. The three-night series starts tonight. Three candidates participating incumbent Ron Nirenberg, former Councilman Greg Brockhouse, and Denise Gutierrez Homer will ask questions that you have submitted on KSAT.com. Each candidate will have their own night. Mayor Nirenberg joins us tonight. Brockhouse joins us tomorrow, and Gutierrez Homer will join us Thursday. It starts at 6.30 p.m. right here on KSAT. We'll continue online from 7 to 7.30 p.m. 
on KSAT.com, our Facebook page, and on the KSAT TV app. In your morning consumer news, the Federal Communications Commission wants you to use its app to help measure internet speeds across the country. The FCC says data collected through the app will help its efforts to expand broadband access in the U.S. You can download the app in the App Store or on Google Play. Intel's CEO says the company is looking to start designing and making computer chips right here in the U.S. It comes amid a global shortage of semiconductors because of the pandemic, which has increased reliance on foreign manufacturers. Intel reportedly in talks with automakers in the states to make the components. Microsoft has pulled off its second biggest acquisition ever. It struck an agreement to buy speech recognition company Nuance in a deal worth nearly $20 billion. Nuance has become a leader in voice recognition services for the healthcare industry. GameStop searching for a new CEO. Reuters says the retailer, which saw stock price soar when it became the target of small investors gathering on Reddit, is looking for a new chief executive to guide his transition from a brick and mortar company into e-commerce. And new help for another struggling airline, Air Canada. The Canadian government has agreed to pump well over four and a half billion dollars into the airline. The agreement protects thousands of jobs and allows the airline to buy dozens of new jets. Right now it's about 10 minutes past the hour and about 70 degrees. And a second verse, same as the first. For a second straight night, the Spurs won on the road. We're going to have the highlights from yesterday's blowout win over the Magic. If something happens, you may need to take someone you know to the emergency room after the break. Why you might want to consider taking the kids to the children's ER instead of a normal hospital setting. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning. We are expecting rain this week, but for now, we will deal with the humidity. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Just about 614. Parents are likely always worried something might happen to their child. But in the event of an emergency, it is important to take your child to the proper place. Dr. Jindy Haug, a pediatric emergency medicine physician at the Children's Hospital of San Antonio, says it is critically important to take your kid to a children's emergency room instead of a normal ER. She says all of the doctors at a children's hospital know the latest medical research and practices specifically for kids. She also says they have the capability to help kids move through treatment. You have to understand a child's coping skills and their emotions. And at a children's hospital, we, everyone that works there from the respiratory therapists to the physicians, to the nurses, the techs, everyone has been specially trained to deal just with children. Dr. Howe also says children have different bodies than adults and may need tailored care to help them recover. You can read more about this story right now on KSAT.com. And breaking news alert, the Food and Drug Administration and CDC will stop using the Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine at federal sites while they investigate safety issues. That is according to the New York Times. The agencies are also urging all states to do the same. Times reports that six patients here in the U.S. have developed a rare disorder involving blood clots within two weeks after receiving the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. So far, nearly 7 million Americans have received that one, according to the CDC. This is the developing story. We'll have updates right here on air and online at ksat.com. And we've had some construction this morning, but right now I'm seeing some flashing lights at 281 on Transguide, Samuel. Yeah, we'll check that out in just a moment, uh, Mark and Stephanie. But right now, uh, travel time's looking good, including 19 minutes from Castroville into downtown and 16 minutes from Lytle into downtown. Mostly green on the map, but as you mentioned, traffic is uh, building up there on a six, uh, 281 uh, northbound. Uh, we told you for the uh, top of the hour here uh, at this, what's going on in San Marcos. So if you're heading up to San Marcos or Austin this morning, if your travels take you up there or work, uh, have some major delays on 35 up to 15 miles per hour. It was down to 7 miles per hour. I understand there's a crash here in this area as you approach uh, State Highway 80. So if your travels take you north this morning, that's just something to keep in in mind. Uh, Stephanie mentioned uh, 281 here at Winding Way. Just looks like there is uh, some traffic uh, volume. And let's take a one more of a look here. This is a Cherry Ridge camera at 410. We mentioned there is a stall vehicle 
there and you can see it there and it the, looks like to be in a right hand lane. So that's something uh, to watch out for this morning as well. And we'll have another update here coming up in a few minutes. Well, it feels very much like an April 13th out there, Mike Osterhage. OK, if does that date sound familiar to you? April 13th, it was on this date when Apollo 13, when the explosion happened when it was uh, about halfway to the moon or so. Oh, gotcha. Houston, yeah. we have a problem. Yes, indeed. Yes. I, I saw that on the launch pad, by the way, before it lifted off. We in gone, person? In, in person, yeah. I got a picture. Oh, wow. Yeah, it, I mean, it was, you know, a couple of miles away, but yeah, it was when I was, uh, when we went down there for uh, spring, Easter for break when I was little, so. That's amazing. That's cool. yeah, yeah, it was pretty cool, so. My dad always said that I jinxed it. Anyway. Oh. Thanks, Dad. Uh, oh. 70 this morning. Temperatures going to wow. stay very steady this morning. Make sure your bus and your car do have a, uh, <laughs> the air conditioning working because it is definitely humid out there. And then later on this afternoon, mostly cloudy skies, and we're going to be at 8. So about 10 below where it was yesterday. That is more like what you would expect uh, this time of year and a beautiful, beautiful picture. We saw that one last half hour and oh, let me find a different one here. There we go. I love that. What color would you call that? Kind of, is that kind of a pale pink or an oceana? What pink. do you think? A pale pink or a, what did you call it? Isn't that kind of an uh, oceana color? I've never heard that a uh, color described that well, way. Well, from here it looked peach, but now Pe it looks a peach. little lighter. Mm -hmm. Peach. We'll go with peach. Okay. I, I'll, I'll look up Oceana. I believe so. I think I'm, I'm saying that right. Okay. I'm not sure. Check that out. Who All knows? Right. I'm probably wrong. Anyway, uh, we got a lot of clouds hanging around here this morning. And uh, yeah, like I said, it is very humid. There are a couple little sprinkles. There's some some drizzle being reported up around. The only reporting site is up around Fredericksburg right now. Otherwise, there may be just a little bit of some uh, light little uh, little drizzles out there. Dew point temperatures, the measure of moisture. What? I, I, I looked up Oceana. Oceana looks like a, a very pale blue. Oh. oh, what am I thinking of? Anyway, <laughs> uh, we have dew point temperatures that are actually uh, higher than what they were at this time yesterday. So more humidity out there and they are going to be sticking around for the next couple of days. So we're not going to get any real break. It will stay humid, even though temperatures the nice thing is they're going to be staying down. We'll have plenty of cloud cover and then by the weekend, We'll see um, more uh, a more su substantial front moving on through here, and that should get rid of some of the humidity, and so it'll be much more pleasant and actually bring in another shot of some cooler air. So we stay on the cool side, right? Today it's normal, and then we'll be slightly below that the next couple of days, and then significantly below that as is looking right now by the weekend. And as far as rain, you know, a couple little sprinkles, and then again, this is this model does sort of a, a broad brush when it comes to depicting some of the rain out there. But but we will have some of these showers around tomorrow and then a few during the day. Even a couple of thunderstorms can't be ruled out. Same thing on Thursday and then going into Friday as well. Shower, a couple of thunderstorms here and there and Saturday even on into the weekend. Now again, this does not mean it's going to be raining constantly, but at least we do have that chance for some rain. And like I said, over the weekend, we are going to be seeing some uh, some cooler temperatures coming on in here. So here's what it looks like with the upper level winds. We've got this pretty much a straight west to east airflow, which we call a zonal flow, which means there's not a lot going on. We do have the small rain chances, a lot of humidity around here, but no significant storm systems. Those are all up to the north. This one out to the west then starts to work its way in our direction. And what that's going to do is when it passes by the to the north of us by Friday late into Saturday, it's going to pull that more significant front on through here. So that's what's going to be cooling us down a little bit for the weekend. So normal uh, high temperature is right around 80. Again, that's where we're going to be later on today. We'll be at 75 degrees at noon with a shower or two. And then we go into the next couple of days. Temperatures drop down a few degrees, upper 70s, mid 70s here and there. A few showers, a couple of thunderstorms. OK rain chances, not a sure thing, but you know, there will be some rain around the area. And then by the weekend, we're going to be into um, the mid and upper 60s for high temperatures, lows in the 50s. Wow, I'm glad yeah. I didn't put away the hoodies. I'm glad no. they're still out there. Mm -hmm. Good idea. Thanks, Mike. What is the color I'm thinking of? I, could it have been kind of an ivory? No. No? Is that what you were thinking of? I'll think about it. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. We should go to a Sherwin-Williams paint store and just <laughs> stare at... <laughs>
or color <laughs> palette. <laughs> or I'll bring Rooney's huge Crayola box. That's and more fun. We'll look through it. <laughs> Much better solution. Thank you, Steph. Right now, 621 on your Tuesday. And four years after purchasing Whole Foods, Amazon's now launching its own food and snack brand. Find out more in today's GMA First Look. Ocean. Yeah, we'll share our home address for french fries. It's easy to be unsafe. So I gave your birth date for free parking. That's how I got this robe. Now it's easy to help protect yourself. Opt in to cyber safety at Norton.com. Look closely at a wolf. You've seen him before. He's your dog. Wolves and dogs share many traits, like a desire for meat. That's why there's Blue Wilderness, made with the protein-rich meat your dog loves. Feed your dog's inner wolf with Blue Wilderness. I've lost count of how many asthma attacks I've had, but my new normal with Nucala, fewer asthma attacks. Nucala is a once-monthly add-on injection for severe eosinophilic asthma, not for sudden breathing problems. Allergic reactions can occur. Get help right away for swelling of face, mouth, tongue, or trouble breathing. Infections that can cause shingles have occurred. Don't stop steroids unless told by your doctor. Tell your doctor if you have a parasitic infection. May cause headache, injection site reactions, back pain, and fatigue. Ask your doctor about Nucala. Find your new normal with Nucala. In this morning's GMA First Look, grocery game changer. Amazon launching a plenty, a food and snack brand that will eventually include hundreds of products that will sell online and in their Amazon retail stores. It all started with Whole Foods, right? And so once they, they you know, bought Whole Foods, then, you know, they decided that, hey, this is a good compliment. Amazon competing with Kirkland at Costco or Archer Farms at Target. By using the house brand, the consumer can save anywhere from 10 to 20 percent. Given their pricing on other house branded items like their Amazon Basics cables and batteries, grocery analysts expect them to become competitive. Amazon is the Goliath. And so unfortunately, they can come in and they can dominate, especially on, on the online uh, grocery space. But could it save you money? We do the math and compare prices. It's all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Becky Worley, ABC News, Oakland, California. No rabbit in this hat. Spurs dominated the Magic in Orlando last night. The silver and black came out of the gate firing on all cylinders. They ended any worries about being tired, having played a tough game in Dallas the night before. Spurs outscored the Magic by 23 points in the first half and didn't let that lead go, toppling the Magic 120 to 97. Every single player for the Spurs played and every single player scored. DeMar DeRozan led all scores with 19 points and six Spurs players scored in double digits. After the game, Coach Pop had some positive reviews for his team's performance. I thought they did a good job. You know, we started a bit slow, but uh, they took it seriously. They respected their opponent. Uh, you know, Orlando's in a tough spot right now. You can't worry about that. You're going to come in, you know, what the attitude is. You, you, you want to win no matter what the situation is. And I thought we did a good job in that regard. Spurs will have one night off before their next game against the Toronto Raptors, but they won't have to go far because the Raptors are playing in Tampa this year due to, due to international travel restrictions related to the pandemic. Tip-off in Florida is scheduled for 6.30 tomorrow night. Nice to have the win. Go Spurs, go. Time now, 627 and about 72 degrees right now. And the trial for Derek Chauvin continues in Minneapolis as protesters escalate after yet another deadly police shooting in the Minneapolis area. And in our next half hour, we're going to take a look at ways that professionals say we can give ourselves a mental checkup. If you haven't gotten your papers in order for your vehicle registration, your time is about to be up. I'm Sarah Costa coming up on GMSA, how you can register before the deadline. Outside this morning, very humid, very mild. Uh, yes, yeah, still humid, not quite as hot. Rain is still in our forecast. After we dodge a bullet with some storms last night, they stayed well out of our viewing area. Good morning to you. It is Tuesday. It's April 13th. Happy Tuesday. Thanks for joining us. Well, at least we get a little break from the heat. That's, even though it's humid. That's true, and we need some rain around here. Yes. Mike says it's not going to be a rain out, but he's got it in the forecast uh, pretty much every day through the next yep. like 
week or so through through the weekend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's going to be some rain here or there. Not everybody's going to be seeing rain, but you know, at least there is that chance. And yeah, temperatures are going to be staying down. Yesterday we did make it up to 92 and that's because we had a lot more sunshine than expected and the humidity. Now we got rid of that heat will be about normal average today, but still as uh, we were talking about have a lot of humidity out there. No problems on the roads. There may be a couple little sprinkles here and there, even some mist. Uh, this is just some clutter right around the radar site. Uh, perhaps off to the east, one or two little uh, sprinkly showers, one or two of mountain portions of the hill country. The only reporting uh, station is Fredericksburg, which had a little bit of drizzle earlier this morning. Oak has, uh, well, it went down significantly from the day before, but still on the high side at 4350. The updated count's going to come out in about, uh, say, 45 minutes to an hour. Warm, humid, a couple of sprinkles this morning. This afternoon, mostly cloudy. A shower is possible, 20% chance for some rain. That's going to be about it. It'll still stay fairly humid, a high of 80 today. Now, tomorrow, a couple of showers, maybe even a thunderstorm thrown in. We'll stay right around upper 70s, so down a degree or two. Then going into the rest of the week, we are going to continue to stay kind of cool, upper to mid 70s. Then we'll be dropping off and getting even cooler, it looks like, by the weekend. And a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms scattered about here. So overall, not a, a bad week, uh, not a whole heck of a lot of sunshine. And we will eventually also get rid of the humidity, but it'll stick around for the next couple of days. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Samuel King. Anything big? Nothing big. Just a couple of stalled vehicles here and there, as you can uh, see on the map, including a couple on I-10. So let's uh, take a look, particularly at this one. This is I-10 eastbound at Probant, a stalled vehicle there, but looks like traffic is still flowing well. It's in the green, so that's a good thing there. Now take a look at some travel times. 24 minutes coming in on I-10 from Bernie and 29 minutes coming in on I-10 from Seguin into downtown San Antonio. 17 minutes on 35 from Lytle, 26 minutes on 35 from New Braunfels. Here's a look at Transguide 410 at Rolling Ridge. Had some issues on 410 earlier, some stalled vehicles and some construction, but things are looking a lot better right now. We'll have another update coming up. Mark, Stephanie? Late breaking news, police on the scene of a shooting at a motel near the medical center. Our Katrina Weber is live in the 7800 block of Fredericksburg Road with the latest Katrina. Well, good morning, Stephanie and uh, Mark. We're still waiting for a briefing from San Antonio police, but they are working here at the back of this motel. Uh, they have uh, several police cars around the back side of this uh, budget suites of America, uh, and they are uh, have roped off the area. Now, I did walk back there. I could see what appeared to be two bodies under tarps uh, in the breezeway of uh, the where the rooms are at this motel. Uh, again, waiting for a briefing for police from police for them to tell us exactly what happened, but it does appear that two people were shot and killed. Uh, residents here told me that they did hear about four gunshots right around six o'clock this morning, and then they noticed the scene that we have here. Again, uh, police roped off the back area of this motel, the budget Suites of America, where they are investigating what appears to be two people shot at this motel this morning. Reporting live in the medical center, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Breaking this morning, the FDA and CDC recommending the country stop administering the Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine right now. The Associated Press reports the agencies released a joint statement saying they are investigating blood clots that developed in six women in the days following their vaccination. All federal facilities, including mass vaccination sites, will pause the use of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine the agencies are also urging all states to do the same. The CDC says an advisory committee will meet tomorrow to discuss the cases. We'll continue to give you the latest on this developing story on air and online at ksat.com. Because of the pandemic, the state put out a temporary waiver on updating your papers for your vehicle registration last year. That waiver is about to expire. Sarah Costa is live downtown with what you need to know about not missing the deadline. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Stephanie. Well, if you've been driving around with an expired vehicle registration and haven't been pulled over, it's because you've been allowed to do so 
but you will get fined starting this Thursday if it's not updated. Now, according to the Department of Motor Vehicles, law enforcement may begin issuing citations to motorists operating a vehicle without a current registration sticker or current registration receipt, and there is no grace period after this deadline. The Bear County Tax Office announced Monday that the temporary waiver that did away with the requirement to renew vehicle registrations title transfers or disabled placards will end at 11:59 p.m. on Wednesday. The Bear County Tax Office says approximately 75,000 motorists still need to register before the waiver period ends. If you are one of them, title transfers and registration renewals can be obtained inside any of the four tax office locations. People can also get their registration renewals and disabled placards at the drive-through at 3505 Pleasanton Road. All offices are open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4.45 p.m., with the exception of Wednesday, which has extended business hours until 6.30 p.m. Of course, registrations can also be renewed at any HEB locations, or you can go online to www.txdmv.gov. You can find all of this information right now on ksat.com. Live from downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. Day 12, a testimony in the murder trial of former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin begins today. It comes as civil unrest over violent police encounters is occurring across the state, and Chauvin's defense team prepares to present. CNN's Nadia Romero is in Minneapolis with the latest. Good morning. The prosecution hasn't officially rested its case, but Judge Cahill says we should expect to hear from the defense today to begin their case. Now, the burden of proof still remains with the prosecution, and that's why we'll likely have a shorter case from the defense. It'll begin with likely calling a witness that we previously heard from from the prosecution back to the witness stand, along with a long list of new witnesses as well. In the prosecution's case over the past three weeks. Mama. Mama. We've seen emotion. <laughs> oh my God. <sighs> from bystanders and Floyd family members. He just was like a, a person that everybody loved around the community. To allegations of excessive force. Sir, is this an MPD trained neck restraint? No, sir. Has it ever been? Not to my neck restraint, no, sir. To a long line of medical doctors taking the stand to argue Floyd's death was the result of low oxygen due to sustained restraint from police. And this caused damage to his brain that we see, and it also caused uh, a PEA arrhythmia that caused his heart to stop. And as the defense prepares to present its case, protesters hit the streets in the Minneapolis area. An officer in Brooklyn Center, Minnesota, says she meant to grab her taser instead of her gun when she shot and killed 20-year-old Dante Wright during a traffic stop just miles from the Hennepin County Courthouse. Our hearts are aching right now. We are in pain right now. And we recognize that this couldn't have happened at a worse time. And there is still a curfew in place for three counties in this area, including Hennepin County, where Minneapolis is. Professional teams just last night postponed their sports games, including the NBA, due to the unrest following the shooting death of Dante Wright. And at last check, Brooklyn Center police say that 40 people were arrested, some for violating curfew, looting, and throwing things at police. From Minneapolis, I'm Nadia Romero. In Knoxville, Tennessee, officials are releasing more information on a shooting inside a high school. The Tennessee Bureau of Investigation says the shooting happened yesterday afternoon. They say a student went into the bathroom with a gun and officers went in after him. That's when the student shot at officers, hitting one of, the, one of them in the leg. Investigators say the officers shot back, killing that student. The injured officer is still in the hospital this morning, and investigators are still trying to figure out how the student was able to bring a gun to school. The World Health Organization has called for a ban on the sale of live wild animals in food markets. According to the organization, animals are the source of more than 70% of all emerging infectious diseases in humans. It comes after a 120-page WHO report into the origins of COVID found it probably spread to people through animals and probably started spreading among humans no more than a month or two before it was noticed in December of 2019. 
There are fewer unaccompanied minors in custody of U.S. Customs and Border Protection. That's according to the most recent data from the government. The White House is attempting to find better facilities to hold the children after hearing complaints about overcrowding. There were just over 3,100 children in CBP custody as of Sunday, nearly half the amount from late March. Japan plans to release treated wastewater into the ocean from the Fukushima nuclear plant. That water contaminated after the 2011 nuclear disaster. Japan's prime minister made the announcement during a meeting with ministers today. Both China and South Korea say they have grave concerns over the move, but Japan insists the water is safe. Japan says the water will be released into the sea in two years, pending approval. Today, the Muslim holy month of Ramadan starts with the sighting of the crescent moon in North America. Ramadan is the ninth month of the Islamic calendar and is one of the five pillars of the religion. It is believed the first verses of the Quran were revealed to the prophet Muhammad during the month of the, excuse me, during this month in the seventh century. Fasting during the day is a tenet of the holy month with the intention of strengthening spirituality and feeling closer to Allah, which is the word for God in Arabic. Right down to your Tuesday morning, 642, we're at about 70 degrees. Millions of people around the world suffer from depression and anxiety. After the break, we're sharing psychology secrets for answering the question, am I really okay? How are you? Good. Fantastic. Not bad, I'm here. It's something we ask each other every day, but after a long year of stress and tension, you may be asking yourself, Am I okay? We have to look deep inside, I think, and ask ourselves, um, honestly, what am I struggling with? And it's not often the obvious thing. Start by asking yourself big picture questions. Why am I having anxiety? Why am I having depression? Experts suggest taking a moment alone to reflect. Am I still enjoying my hobbies and interests? Am I avoiding the people I love? Am I getting annoyed very easily? How have I been adapting? You have to get to a point mentally, emotionally, where you're not so flooded with feeling or thought that you can ask those questions. Mental health experts advise paying attention to ways your body may be telling you something is wrong. Signs like trouble sleeping, loss of appetite, grinding or clenching teeth, holding tension in your shoulders or becoming less active. If you had just a year to live, what would you do differently? Don't wait until things get bad. Protect yourself now to avoid burnout or crisis later. You can even take your own mental health screening test right now on the Mental Health America website. Experts also say to consider the length and duration of your symptoms. Everyone has bad days, but if you're feeling down for more than two weeks at a time, it may be time to seek professional help. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. It's now 647. And earlier this morning, there was a stalled vehicle at Cherry Ridge. Uh, how are things looking there, Samuel? Uh, that is cleared as well as some of the other ones uh, we had in the area. But we do have some delays here and there as we get closer to 7 o'clock. Let's take a look on the east side here. This is typically a spot that slows down where I-10 and Loop 410 come together. So now you're down to 34 miles per hour on 410 northbound heading up to 35. Uh, we've been mentioning situation on 35 and San Marcos, and it is all clear that crash is cleared up and it is smooth sailing. We had some major backups there uh, just a little bit earlier this morning. Uh, here's a look at uh, 35 at uh, Loop 410. Traffic building a little bit, Mike, but is flowing well this morning. Lots of humidity when you step outside. Thank you, sir. And uh, first of all, look at this great picture up there. Got to get up the Enchanted Rock before it gets too hot. Yeah, it's beautiful out there. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. And uh, well, we're not really seeing any, any signs of the sunrise yet. Maybe a little bit lighter along the horizon, but plenty of clouds out there. And the uh, humidity is it's high and it's going to be staying high for the next couple of days. Nice thing is at least temperatures won't be as hot as what they were yesterday. We got up to 92. We're going to be closer to 80 today. But again, these uh, dew points and therefore the humidity stay up not only today, but also going into tomorrow. A little bit of a break in portions of the hill country, but it's not going to be any just bone dry air coming in here for the next couple of days. And this is going to be the situation looks like through the end of the work week. Then we'll start to see some dry air coming in here by the weekend. So temperatures, we're at uh, 71 right now, 60s in parts of the hill country. Then you go out in the northern portion of the state and up around the panhandle. 50s, 40s, and even 30s up there. And that's just kind of the leading edge of this really, really cold air mass that's sitting there over the kind of the western two thirds of the United States. And it's not as though this is just going to dive down on top of us, but it will a little 
kind of hunk of this. It's going to be flirting around here and a little tiny bit of this is going to be pulled on through here by the weekend. We are going to be staying thanks to slightly cooler temperatures and a little bit of that, you know, the leading edge of that air mass as well as the cloud cover. We are going to be staying slightly below normal for the next couple of days. Normal average being 80 will be kind of mid to upper 70s through the end of the week. Then we get a little bit bigger chunk of that cooler air coming in here by the uh, weekend and that's what's going to knock temperatures down down into the 60s around here for the weekend get rid of some of the humidity so here's what the upper level winds look like right now this uh, straight west to east flow there's nothing really to take that cold air and push it down on top of us which is why it sort of stays here for a while then as we go in toward the latter part of the week that low develops here and as that comes by to the north of us that's going to grab a little hunk of that cooler air and push it on through here and so that's what we can expect for the weekend with those cooler temperatures today not temperature wise, not bad, but it's the humidity 75 degrees, mostly cloudy skies, couple of showers. There may be a little sprinkle out there this morning. Uh, hardly anything, if at all, showing up on radar and there hasn't been much being reported though. 80 today at, for a high temperature and again, a shower or two is possible, not likely. A little bit better chances of rain the next couple of days, even a few thunderstorms thrown on in here. And again, temperatures mid and some upper 70s. Then we go in toward the weekend. We get a Nice little chunk of that cooler air, so we'll stay in the uh, 60s and about 10 degrees or more below normal and lows in the low 50s, mid to lower 50s. That's going to be kind of coolish. That's going to be nice. All right, yeah. we smell what you're cooking. Thank yeah. you very much, Mike. Hopefully you're cooking grilled cheese mm. this weekend. That would be good this weekend. Mm -hmm. So yesterday, After yesterday's <laughs> National Grilled Cheese Day. Yeah, no kidding. You guys got some amazing recipes yesterday, didn't you? Yes, a dessert, uh, one made with peanut butter, cookie butter, which you can find in the peanut butter aisle. Um, Marshmallow whip and chocolate chips. And it just wow. it oozed and it was good. That Amazing. Was good. Yeah. 651. And it seems like only yesterday when ice and snow were covering the ground, now that spring has finally sprung, it's time for blue bonnets to take over. Tomorrow on GMSA, we'll take a look at the delayed wildflower season across Texas. Outside with live cam, the news you need to know before you go is coming up next. Gunfire at a Northwest Side Motel. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. San Antonio police are investigating what appears to be a double shooting here at the Budget Suites of America. They are working back here uh, by the rooms. That is where they have what appears to be two bodies underneath tarps outside one of the rooms. This is the 7800 block of Fredericksburg Road, uh, right near Medical Drive. Police were called here again for gunshots. Some of the people here told me that they heard about four gunshots right before six o'clock this morning and then they came out of their rooms to find the scene here with police having the area roped off. We have not had an official word from SAPD just yet, but uh, we do definitely see what appear to be two bodies underneath tarps outside the room. Uh, we are staying here to get more information on the situation as it develops and we'll have that information for you a little bit later on. Reporting from the Medical Center area, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you very much, Katrina. 6.55, some slowdowns developing on 1604 on the north side at Cal Seal. You're down to 30 miles per hour. But looking at some travel times coming in from around the region, 27 minutes from New Braunfels on 35, 24 minutes on I-10. And here is 1604 at Bandera. Traffic starting to build, Mike. Lots of clouds and still plenty of humidity out there. Boy, you're definitely going to notice it. We're at 71 right now, so still very warm. And it's not going to be anywhere near as hot as yesterday. Yesterday was 92. We'll stay at 80 today. A little bit of a breeze out of the northeast. And that's uh, closer to normal, or that is the normal high. And we'll stay on the cooler side this weekend and then really cool down by uh, the weekend and lower humidity by the weekend as well. All right, we'll prepare for the rain. Yes. Nice. And thanks for joining us today. We'll see you back here at 9. Good Morning America is coming up next right here on KSAT. Have a good one.